Hi there, I'm assuming this is all working. I'm hoping so anyway. Ah. Uh, basic guide to setting up um, Ableton Looper using a MIDI controller. It could be the FCB 1010, which is what I use mostly because I freeze my hands. But this is an Ovation Launch Control XL. Uh, any MIDI controller that can send standard MIDI signals will do this. So a little bit of background. This is the Launch Control Editor and I've set up these buttons here to be momentary uh, which means it happens once. These lower buttons I've set up to toggle which means that you have to press it twice to do anything and you need this for the reverse function so mostly they're toggle buttons. <coughs> Excuse me, so I've set up an audio channel external in which uh, I'll add later I've set up a reverb and delay on the sends. Um, I'm monitoring the input, although there's no input at the moment. So we click on here and under audio effects we drag a looper down onto there. Uh, and then we set this up for MIDI control. So I've got a little list of here the order in which you do them. You might want to think uh, about which button controls which whatever works for your you know your way of thinking but this is one that works for me I'm going to try and copy that so I'm going to MIDI mode press Control M or press the MIDI button up there and we click on the first item and we press the button and it assigns that to it so next one is the next one is going to be stop which is that one then we're going to do clear is that one. So I'm just going to go through each of the features that I want to add. This is uh, loop length, half and double. Then this is up and down an octave. So first one I'm going to go down, second one is going to go up. Um, then we click on reverse and this is the one I've set up for toggle. So this will work because it's in toggle mode. The other two controls that are useful to have are the speed, which I'm going to assign to that one, and the feedback, which I'm going to assign to that one. Um, I'll also set up the send and return a couple of buttons here, so you just click on the thing you want to assign, turn a knob, and it changes the MIDI message for it. These are all, uh, by the way, these are all control changes um, back in here. So it's control CC number 94 on MIDI 1, but you can choose those to suit your own uh, way of working. So right, that should have set it up. So if I escape now, um, then I can test these buttons. So this should be start. And I've set it up to record and then go into overdub, but I can change that. Um, I can change that to go into play. So stop is the next one, um, get it playing again, and we've got, we can clear it, we can redo it, undo it, redo it, and, and if I twiddle the knobs you can see the speed going up and down, the feedback, press this button, goes into reverse. Sometimes the first time you press it doesn't quite pick up on it, but then after that it seems to be okay. Um, the other things we've got here, so, so undo basically undoes the last thing you've done. Even if you've cleared it, if you clear a loop, you can then undo it and bring that loop back. This button is play and overdub. And we've got record, overdub, play, stop buttons up here. This one halves the length of the loop, which is that one, and the one next to it doubles the length of the loop, so it just builds up multiples of whatever loop you've set up. Then the buttons here I've assigned so I can go down and up. Um, so let's get a bit of sound in. <coughs> Group the guitar. So I'm going to stop the loop, which is this button. I'm going to clear it, 
which is that button. Oh yeah, I set the quantization generally to none because I want to set it from whatever I'm playing. Start song, I have that on so that the transport button, oh, let me stop it, the transport button will start as soon as I record. And this is kind of important, that sets the song tempo depending on the length of your loop. So whatever, if it's a three second loop it'll set a certain BPM, if it's a five second loop it'll set a different BPM, you can then use that to, to time other uh, pre-recorded samples or MIDI or whatever. Um, this is up and down an octave. Input to output, that's always, which means that you always hear what comes in at the input. So even if it's not playing, you'll still get your signal coming through. Uh, in practice, you probably want your loop on a separate track from your input channel and feed it from the audio from, but this is the, the simplest thing. So let's... Uh, Do a couple of chords. So normally I do that with my foot, but um, I'm using the mouse, or should be using this really. So we've got a loop in there now. So we can reverse it, which is just great. Reversed anything is brilliant, particularly if you add a bit of reverb. A bit of echo. And then if we drop that down an octave, let me push the volume a bit, I should have set a slide. So you play it backwards, drop it down an octave, sounds great for another octave. And of course I can, I can drop it down an octave, let me just stop it. I find the octave button really useful because whatever you're playing um, when you double the octave it still uh, melodically it works with whatever you've got going uh, whereas if you bring the speed down a bit let me show you it's great for effects but when you try to get back to zero you've got to kind of fiddle about until you get exactly zero so using the octave buttons, I can always go down to fully down, which is three octaves, and then back up to zero. Um, so I tend to use this speed control for weird effects, uh, but it can cause problems. Feedback, I show it up on full. Let's click uh, overdub, so if we press the play button and the record button again, bring it to overdub. violin loop there and one nice thing is to go up an octave do some bottom notes let me double the length what to play with so I'm bringing in some low notes and when I drop that down an octave let's go out of record overdub mode when I drop down an octave, then those low notes become really low. I can go further. It's got off reverb. Play it forwards. Often when I'm playing a loop, just to give some interest, I'll just go up. So pretty much uh, <coughs> most of what I do uses the speed control or the octave control and the reverse. And when I've got some that's working, I will double the loop tempo. Uh, sorry, double the loop length. Or shrink it down. Um, anyway, I think that's probably enough to be going on with. So um, I hope this turns out. 
and let me know what you think. If you've got any specific questions, then let me know.